Welcome everyone on behalf of Pioneer Federal Credit Union. Uh, we are so happy that you guys are joining us this evening for our first ever live webinar, which is just so exciting. Um, my name is Chelsea Risco. I'm going to be your guys' host this evening, and I am the e-learning specialist here at Pioneer Federal Credit Union. Um, I used to say e-learning and like no one knew what I was talking about, but thanks to 2020, e-learning has kind of been thrown on the map because everyone's been doing stuff from home. So it's been a really rewarding and busy year for me and my position. And to top it off, I am just so excited to be launching webinars for our members and our communities. So um, some fun facts about me this year, my husband and I will be celebrating 10 years of marriage, which is very exciting. Uh, we have a rambunctious and sweet as can be two-year-old, and he is pretty much the funniest guy I know. No offense, Adam. You're pretty funny too, but Adam's my husband. Um, also, I absolutely love being responsible with my money, and I never go on shopping sprees or spend too much at Starbucks. So I don't think you guys realize you're actually playing two truths and a lie, so I bet you can figure out which one of those is a lie. You'll, you'll hear more about that in a moment. So tonight you guys are here to learn about saving for the future. And here's something really important I want you guys to know. And I wanna say right in the beginning is that saving it is never too early and is never too late to start that journey. So I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, before we jump in today, I also wanna mention that as we go through today's session, please feel free to utilize the Q and A um, box, which you guys can, I believe your little controller bar is down below me, um, but there should be a Q&A box there. You can submit your questions in there and uh, we'll be sure to get to as many of them as we can at the end of today's time. My teammate Tiffany will be watching that Q&A box as well to um, maybe answer some if there's some she can answer um, or she'll bring me some of the questions at the end so we can talk about them so everyone can listen to the answer. Um, also, I'm gonna be asking you guys to participate through the chat box. So make sure you have that available as well. And I'm also gonna be asking you guys to participate in polls and it just so happens to be time for our first poll. So you're gonna see it pop up on your screen. The question is, what are you hoping to gain from this webinar? So we have the option, understand why saving is hard, um, steps I can take to start saving, tools to help me save and learn how to teach my kids how to save. I believe you can pick multiple, if not pick the one that you're most excited for. So we've got the results rolling in. We're at 58% voted in. So I'm gonna give you guys a few more seconds. Make sure everyone gets a chance to submit their answer. We're at 79%, 83%. Are we gonna make it to 100? We're at 95%. If you haven't had a chance yet, go ahead and click on the screen with your answer. I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's go ahead and share the results. So 4% um, of you guys are excited to learn, um, or I should say understand why saving is so hard. 17% of you guys say steps I can take to start saving. The winner of the poll was 61% with tools to help me save. And then lastly, 17% is learn how to teach my kids how to save. So the exciting thing is, we're gonna be talking about all these things this evening. <laughs> so every one of you who voted, you will get some of that information you are wanting. So. Um, this evening, we're going to ask the hard question, why is saving so dang hard? Um, then I'm going to ask you guys to take just one step with me, just one. Uh, from there, we're going to give you guys the tools to create a map for your savings journey that is specific to you. And lastly, we're going to talk about how you can leave a legacy of financial um, responsibility. Okay, speaking of financial responsibility, we're going to play a little game of never have I ever. So the rules are... Uh, we're gonna hold up our hand. So I'm gonna get mine here, you can see it, there we go. Um, and what we're gonna do is anytime we hear a situation that we have done, we're gonna put our finger down. So let's start. First one, <clears throat> never have I ever gone to the grocery store with a well-intended shopping list, but all of a sudden my cart has those new gluten-free Oreos in it and also seven other things that I did not have listed. <laughs> okay, I'll just put my finger down for that one. Okay, next one, uh, never have I ever been to Target no, that's it. That's the end of that one. Because like, have you ever been to Target? Like, I really don't understand um, how when you spend $15 and also $23, somehow your bill is $218, but it just seems to happen every time. Okay. Never have I ever bought coffee every day of the week, even though I have a fully functioning espresso machine and all my favorite flavors and also barista experience. Seems oddly specific. <laughs> a little bit attacked. <laughs> 
Okay, last one. Never have I ever I've been watching a Facebook live video of this girl selling these super soft Mickey blankets. And I'm feeling really anxious. So I think, yeah, of course, a big fluffy blanket is going to make me feel better. So I drop a quick $185 on a blanket from a stranger. Me neither. Okay. So obviously, here's the thing I'm not perfect. But guess what, guys? I am not asking you to come here as a perfect being either. Um, maybe your vice is Cabela's or gaming or Amazon, but here's the thing. You're not alone. Um, I've had to work really hard over the last 10 years specifically to change my spending habits, some of which still exist. I'll be honest and, uh, learn to assess what's really important to me. So what I want to do today is share what I've learned with you guys. So we're going to start with this quote here. It says, be careful not to compromise what you want most for what you want right now. So studies show that poor financial choices are associated with high levels of in the moment thinking. So we've all been there, whether it's Target, Starbucks, Cabela's, Facebook lives, we all get caught up in that moment, right? And it's, it's being in the right now, what we want right now and everything else that we've committed to seems less important. Um, so things like the plans that we have to buy a new car or a down payment on a house or establish an emergency fund or even our own retirement. Um, those in the moment impulsive decisions feel better even though we know better. So isn't it weird that's difficult for us to like make choices that will benefit ourselves in the future? Like it's us, it's just in a few years. So why is it so hard for our brains to understand the steps we have to take to get there? Well, according, according to science, our minds think about our future selves in the same way that it thinks about complete strangers. Here's what happens. When we think about ourselves, a region of the brain called the medial prefrontal cortex lights up. When we think about other people, activity in the same region powers down. And so when we try to picture our future selves, our brain tells us that that person's a stranger, stranger danger, we've never met them. So unfortunately our brains act as if our future selves are people we don't even know very well. And quite frankly, someone we don't care much about. What this means is saving up for the future is just not natural to us. It's hard for us to save because it's difficult for our brains to think about the future in a concrete way. Plus more compulsive creatures. Um, the instant gratification feels better than having to wait, which I think all of us have felt at one point or another. Um, we really don't wanna feel like we're missing out on the present, right? So obviously we're doomed. No, I'm just kidding. Don't lose hope. Uh, we can either trick our minds into imagining our future selves more effectively. I actually read a suggestion that said, use an aging photo app, like take a picture of yourself and apply the age filter. So that way you can see what you look like when you get older. <laughs> that was an actual suggestion, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post something else. Maybe more realistically, uh, we can set up systems to make saving money um, a default option for ourselves. So let's dive into the steps you can take to start making your future self Okay. There are going to be more tools I talk about during this session, but here's the one and only step I'm asking you guys to take. I'm going to say that again. This is the only step, one and only, that I'm asking you guys to take right now. No matter where you stand financially, I want you to be mindful. Okay. Being mindful means playing, paying close attention to, or being especially conscious of something. So in this case, uh, your spending and your savings habits. So I want you guys to chat in. So get your chat box up and ready. Uh, what are some ways that you can be mindful about your spending and saving? I want to hear from you guys. So I'm going to open up my chat box too. So I can see what you guys are chatting in. So again, the question is, what are some ways that you can be mindful about spending? These can be things that you already practice, things you've heard about. And here they come. Okay, so we have shop with a list. That's a really great idea. Have a detailed budget or use an app like Mint. Mm -hmm. Eric's on to something. Creating a list for grocery shopping. Really stick to my list, even at Costco. Oh, Holly, I feel you on that one. <laughs> so to create a budget, Lisa, making it sticking to a grocery list and noting how much you really spend, right? Get the reality check. Uh, put stuff in your online cart. However, wait a few days to check out so you can think if you really need it. Good one, Elizabeth. Hannah says having balance notifications on. Yes. Giving yourself a budget, track spending, figure out wants versus needs, says Martin. Yes. Use the budget manager and home banking to identify your spending habits. Oh, someone must be 
Someone must be a pioneer expert in here. <laughs> uh, let's see, wait on something you absolutely have to have, shop with a list, eat before shopping for food. Tammy, what a great point you've just made. <laughs> Kristen, follow a 24 hour rule for impulse purchases, definitely. Go one week without spending anything. Whew. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> How? <laughs> That's a really good challenge, Carl. I like it. Don't impulse online shop. Wait a day and be intentional about spending. Wow, you guys have some really, really good input. And luckily, we're going to touch on these a little bit more. So you guys are on check here. Let's see. Adam also added keep checkbook register updated daily, check balances daily, and uh, watch the number keep shrinking to be aware of your money going away. Absolutely. Great input, you guys. Thank you so much for participating. Okay, so here's a couple practical ways that I came up with how to do this. So to get a really big reality check, I want you guys to print off last month's bank statement. Um, then I want you to take two highlighters, each a different color, and I want you to highlight what purchases were needs and what purchases were wants. <laughs> so if you can take this opportunity to be more mindful of the things you might not actually need, <laughs> uh, you can make better choices in the future. And or um, if you're in the moment, you guys kind of touched on this too. If you're in the moment, ask yourself these questions. Do I need this? And answer honestly. Um, am I sure? Just in case you didn't answer honestly, uh, could it wait 30 days? Uh, is this something I could rent or borrow? Great question. And do I have the money saved for this? That might catch you there. So this list can be really useful during those target runs we talked about. <laughs> But here's the thing, if you can make it through this list of questions and still still feel like you wanna buy it, then do it. I'm not saying that I want you to, you know, go cold turkey on, you know, all of the things that you're used to doing. But what I want you to do is to stop and think and break your habits, move out of that subconscious uh, part in your mind and just really assess your choices with your finances, okay? Okay, real quick, I just wanna put some perspective to the importance of our everyday decisions. I'm asking you guys to do some quick math, so let's see who can get it right. Um, how much would you have to spend every day in a year to blow $10,000? <laughs> I was gonna say, whoever has a calculator is probably gonna get this one right. Let's see if anyone else has an answer or if Leah got it. Okay, I guess everyone's agreeing with Leah, right? Yes, Leah, you're right. You guessed correctly. $27.40. Just $27.40 a day of miscellaneous spending for a year would add up to $10,000. And maybe you're not spending that much per day, but what would happen if you averaged out your daily spending over the year? That might, that might be different. Um, or what if you just spent $5 a day on coffee, which I have done? Well, if you add that up, that's $1,800. That could be your emergency savings if you don't have one yet. And right there, that is mindfulness. Simply being aware of how small decisions add up. So the next step in mindfulness is budgeting, which you guys touched on as well in the chat. Um, this quote says, a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. I think that's a pretty good quote. So I understand we have all types of people on this webinar today. Each of you guys have different strengths. You have different challenges, you come from different income levels, and that's why step one is mindfulness. Um, then once you're ready, you can move on to step two, which is a budget. So I do have another poll for you guys about budgets. Let me go ahead and launch that now and see what your answer is. This one, you can do multiple choice. You can click multiple. So what is your experience with budgeting? Do you budget weekly? Do you budget monthly? Have you used a budget in the past, but you don't at this time? Have you found, um, or excuse me, have, have you found... I'm going to try that again. Have you not found something that's worked for you? There we go. Um, have you not because it's overwhelming to you or is it just something you haven't considered before? So go ahead and click on the screen with your answer. We're at 84% completion. So we have a few more people that can weigh in still, making sure you guys have enough time to do that. 96% voted in. I'm going to give you guys five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Let's go ahead and look at what you guys said. Okay. So we have a few people who budget weekly. Um, some, most of you actually budget monthly, which is awesome. Half of you, 54%. Uh, 21% said I used to budget, but I don't at this time. Um, I haven't found something that worked for me. 17% said that. And lastly, 13% of you guys said I haven't because it's overwhelming to me. Yes, it is overwhelming, right? Even if you're good at it, there have been months 
I love budgeting. I really love sitting down and doing it, but there are months where I'm just like, whoa, like it's very overwhelming. So um, that's great. I wanted to just kind of check in with you guys to see where you're at on budgeting. And then we go ahead and share some resources with you now. So um, here's one thing I did want to say about budgeting, whether you're doing it now um, or you want to do it and it's something that's overwhelming you. I just want to say you're not going to get it right the first time. You might be in that trial period right now or you haven't even started, but um, everything we talk about, you're going to have to practice. You're going to have to try. You're going to have to pivot and try again. But here's what I want you to remember. Progress, not perfection. My friends, okay, I'm going to say it one more time. Progress not perfection. That's going to be our motto for this webinar. Okay. If you haven't had the chance already, when you guys were coming in earlier, um, the budgeting sheet I'm about to, about to show you guys is actually available on our resources page for this webinar. So you can access it using this QR code with your phone, or if you're on your phone, uh, Tiffany will put it into the chat box. There she goes. So you can click on that, save the page, favorite it. So you can come back to it after this webinar and get all these awesome resources. Um, also, if you guys are asking any questions, make sure to put those into the Q&A box. We're gonna use chats for activities and for feedback, but I do want to make sure that we keep all of our questions in the Q&A box. So make sure you put those in there and Tiffany will be watching. Okay, let's talk about the budget sheet. So why do we need to start with a budget sheet before we jump into savings? Well, you need to know where you're starting before you can decide where you're going, right? So since we're in the middle of the month, um, you're going to want to wait till March is all wrapped up and then you can complete this budget sheet so you can get an accurate idea of what your monthly financials um, and what that flow looks like. So step one is to fill in the blanks, obviously. <laughs> so you're going to input your income there and then the amount spent in each category. So you can see them all listed down and then a subcategory um, listed there too. So you'll total out each of those categories. And lastly, there on the bottom right, you'll see there's those three boxes. Um, that's where you're going to use this to calculate your take home pay minus the total of all the categories. Now what's left in that box labeled zero balance uh, will be what leads you to your next step. So if that number is negative or you feel like you're barely keeping your head above water, it might be time to reach out for some help. And I want you to know that is totally okay. Um, at Pioneer, we have a great partner for our members called Green Path. And this service is free for our members, but it's still open to the public to use as well. Um, they can take a look at your overall financial standing and suggest things that can help. They can set up a debt management plan. If you're in over your head with loans, they can counsel you, help you find solutions to things that are holding you back and um, with your credit and your debt. And they can also specifically help you with budgeting. So um, while I just mentioned uh, ways that they can partner with those who are overwhelmed, they can also partner with people to make plans for the future. So be sure to visit Green Path's site. Um, that's also linked on our resources page. And remember, you get access to all of Green Path's tools just by being a Pioneer member for free. Okay, let's get back to our budget sheet and see what other steps we might take based on that balance box. So if the balance is good, but maybe not great, then it's time to reassess and reallocate. Um, so to do this, we're just going to assess each category and see which ones you feel like you might have spent too much in. So um, once you find those, you're going to set a new budget for them. For example, let's say we're looking at groceries. If you spent $500 in groceries last month and you would like to try and spend only $400 this month, then try it. Uh, what you're going to have to do is avoid those random items like the gluten-free Oreos <laughs> that might end up in your cart. Um, and here's a hot tip. Utilize the Walmart pickup app if you shop at Walmart. Um, you can actually put in all the groceries you're wanting to get as you're selecting those items, you get to see where your total is. So that way you know exactly how much you're spending. And if you need to adjust and get rid of the Tillamook ice cream, then maybe you need to get rid of the Tillamook ice cream, okay? But as you're adjusting your budgets, you're gonna have to tap back into that mindfulness activity that we talked about earlier. So assess your wants, assess your needs, decide on a change, and then find ways to make it happen. Then once you've made those changes, and start seeing your extra funds appear, you can start reallocating those funds towards your goals. Okay, now what if you reassess and everything seems good as it is? Well, you're gonna go ahead and throw some confetti and eat a cupcake. Well done. Just help some others, okay? <laughs> but I bet that a majority of us are needing to look a little bit more into this reallocating step. Okay, so we're gonna do a poll again, get you guys involved. This time we're talking about savings. When it comes to your spending and saving, which of the following 
sentences is most accurate. Do you save and then spend, or do you spend and then save, or are you currently not saving at all? Also, remember how I said that I was addicted to Starbucks? Ah, that is great. Okay, sorry, we're at 80% voted in. I want to give you guys some more times. Okay, we're at 96%. We'll do a little countdown again. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's share the results. Oh, interesting. Okay, so 60% are saying you guys save and then spend. 36% are saying I spend and then I save. And 4% saying I'm not currently saving. Perfect. Well, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I found this quote and I thought it was really good. And it might question some things that people are doing. <laughs> so the quote is, do not say what is left after spending, spend what is left after saving. I know it's kind of hard, right? But in that last slide, I was talking about how we need to reallocate those funds. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to reallocate those towards our goals. So let's look at this a little bit more. I'm going to give you some like tracks on what you can follow. So what you're going to do is you're going to pay yourself first. I'm sure you guys have heard of this. this is a very popular term in the financial world, but here's an image to kind of help. So you're going to start with your paycheck from those funds. Of course, you're going to pay your bills. Duh. Um, those are the priority. And then you're going to allocate funds into savings buckets. We're going to talk more about these in a second, but then after you do buckets, then you can spend. Okay. So I'm going to pause for just a moment. I'm going to ask you to kind of just think about your current funds flow on a payday. Is it similar to this or is it just like way off? I'm not asking you to answer. You don't have to chat in and confess. I'm just kind of just want to see what you think. Okay, so now that you've thought about it, I want to ask, can you see how this flow could help make more sense for you to achieve your goals? Okay, let's look a little bit more at these buckets, okay? So a bucket can be a separate savings account. It can be a cash envelope. That's what I prefer. Um, or an actual physical bucket. If that floats your boat, whatever works for you, uh, you just need to find a place to put the funds each time you get paid so that you can start building up your savings. Now, if you're not really sure what buckets you should be considering, I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you start with an emergency fund if you don't have that already. You want to put at least three months of your expenses into that emergency fund. So that way you can use that bucket for unexpected repairs, for uh, like broken appliances, or in case you lose income, um, you can have that peace of mind knowing that your monthly expenses will be covered until you can regain that income. From there, you're going to pick another, a uh, couple other buckets, I should say, like maybe a new vehicle or home repairs, date nights, vacations, or for me personally, coffee. <laughs> Depending on how much money you have left after you've calculated your budget will determine how much you can actually put into each of these buckets after each paycheck. And yes, I really do have a coffee envelope that I use each week. Um, each Friday, my allocated amount goes in there and whatever is in there I can use after it's gone. No more coffee for me. My husband, on the other hand, he has a hunting envelope or golf one, we call it, but he uses it for both. And each Friday, some funds go into that envelope and it continues to grow until he needs it in the fall. So for me, it makes sense to have money set aside each week for my coffee. And it makes sense for him to have money going to savings for that one big hunting trip each year. So we also have a savings account for um, our future vehicle. And what we could do is we could actually just have an automatic transfer over there. So if you can set that up in your online banking, you don't even have to touch the money. Each paycheck that comes in, it moves right over there. Um, and here's the thing there, uh, excuse me, this is where you have to choose what's right for you. I can't tell you that you have to be honest with yourself. You have to know how to set yourself up for success. And again, I'm going to say it progress, not perfection here, friends. So you can try something and realize it's not really working for you. Um, but do not give up on yourself or your future. Okay. Just promise me that. Okay. Now that I have Rachel Hollis to you, let's hear from you in the chat. Uh, what's one bucket that makes sense for your goals. It can be from this list here, or maybe one that you have been inspired to start looking at putting money into. I just want to hear, um, what bucket you think you might move forward to start putting money into. I'm going to take another drink real quick. Scott said an emergency fund. Absolutely. I 
can't advocate enough that you start with an emergency fund. It really, it really brings you that peace of mind. Amber said date nights, Leah said vacation fund. Yes, Kendra, thank you to have everyone see your comments. Make sure you select all panelists and attendees in the two box right above where you type. So we said date nights, Camille emergency fund or vacation fund. Yep. Martin said date nights and trips, vacation after being locked down in all caps. Absolutely. Health expenses fund says Holly, home repair. Eric says, yep. Furniture bucket. Yep. Good one, Hannah. Working on growing a small 1K ER fund uh, to full six months expenses ER fund. And the ER fund is really, yep, exactly. The ER fund, guys, I'm telling you. Retirement fund says Tammy. Yes. Date night says Kristen. Melissa, camping supply fund. Right? It can be even the smallest things. Uh, yeah, like if it's specific to your hobbies, if it's specific to your lifestyle, definitely. Sadie says a special purpose savings at Pioneer FCU. Yes. All of the buckets we're talking about can be opened as special purpose savings. So if you want it, I mean, seriously, I mean this, if you wanted to open a savings account for every single one of these buckets listed on the screen, you could do that by opening special purpose funds and we can even name them the specific things or you can rename them online. So just throwing out pioneer stuff there real quick. Leah said pets, yes. Adam says stonks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I love that phrase because I know nothing about stocks or stocks, um, but my husband does. And so he gets really excited and I'm like, all right, go stonks. And he doesn't think I'm funny. Anyways, great answers, everyone. <laughs> Thank you again for participating in that. So now that you guys have a budget in place, we're saying, if you're walking through this with me, You've also selected your buckets by this point. Here are some fun tools that can keep you on track. So these are totally optional, but I found them helpful in my years of learning how to save. So first, let's say that one of your goals is that emergency fund. Um, and you wanna have that built up by this time next year. And you just wanna start start little, start with $1,000, okay? So you can actually use this money challenge sheet like you see here and help lay out your game plan and then hold yourself accountable. Um, and you can find a lot many, many versions of this chart on Pinterest or even Google um, based on how much you want to save, what kind of time frame you're working with, and even make it realistic to where you are right now financially. Um, you can pick a small goal to prove to yourself that you are capable and you can do this, um, or you can really go for the gusto and take on a big challenge if you have some big goals in mind. Now, if you're a checklist person, uh, this can be really fun as you check off each step. Similarly, uh, the next resource I'm going to give you is the custom tracker. So if you're a visual or tactical person, these work great. You fill in the tracker as you get closer to your goal um, until you get it all colored in. Um, you choose the amount and the timeline, then you get at it. So here's a great thing about these visual tools is that you can place them in a community space in your home um, to remind yourself, but also to remind uh, your family or share that accountability if you guys are all working towards this goal together with a partner or a spouse. Um, you can also put them uh, places that you'll see them a lot. So think your kitchen fridge or uh, where you hang your keys or on the bathroom mirror is another great one. And then now if you're more of a techie person, you prefer to tackle your goals on your phone or your computer, you can do some of these really great budgeting apps um, and savings apps. So um, I've used a couple of these, but for me, and again, this is personal preference, I like paper and envelopes. I really like moving things around and writing things down. Um, but again, try to find something that will work for you. Some really great apps I've listed here, Every Dollar, Good Budget, Mint, Envelopes, Nerd Wallet, and You Need a Budget. Um, and don't forget, you probably have access to a great mobile banking app from your financial institution at Pioneer. <laughs> we do have a really great mobile app and online banking that has spending tracking and budgeting tools that are free to our members. So uh, check it out if you're considering becoming one of our members uh, for this and many other perks if you aren't already. Okay, one more look at the QR code to make sure you guys have access to those resources. Tiffany, again, we'll put that link in the chat, make sure you save it uh, or favorite it so you can come back to it. And then we are gonna be wrapping up here soon. So make sure you get any of your questions into the Q&A box if you haven't already. Okay, let's look a little further ahead on your journey and talk about retirement. So there are things that you can and absolutely should be doing right now to benefit, benefit, little accent I get once in a while, benefit your future self. 
Um, if you haven't already, as soon as you feel like you're ready, you should make sure that your buckets include your 401k and or an IRA. I say and because you can do both if you want to. Um, if you're if you're employed, I really suggest that you find room in your budget to match your employer's contribution percent to your 401k because you're essentially getting free money. And then again, stay until you're fully vested. So make sure you find out when that is in your career. Um, the things about these funds is that they grow. So the sooner you start, the better. Same with an IRA. Do your research, find an advisor and start saving for the future. And again, you may not see that immediate payoff that you may want to see. Um, but I promise you will feel it later on in life. It is worth it to invest in yourself and your future. Now, if you have your retirement all sorted out, perhaps you're more focused at this point on your child or your grandchild's future. Um, you can set up an Idaho 529 if you live in Idaho. I know some people who joined us today do not. Um, maybe check out what your state offers. But in Idaho, we have what's called an Idaho 529, um, which is for savings for kids uh, well, who will be adults, <laughs> their education. Um, and you can make that one of your buckets if that's something that you want to uh, focus on. Okay, so here's what it all boils down to, my friends. Everything I've said, all the tips that I've given, stuff that you guys have added in the chat that has been really great and insightful, it boils down to this. The only way to save money is to spend less than you earn. There's just no way around it, but there are many ways to go through it. And I really hope that you guys feel more equipped and encouraged to take your first steps and begin that journey today. Um, before we wrap up, there is one more thing I want to empower you to do, and that is to leave a legacy. So we're going to do one more final poll. And my question for you is, which of the following children in your life could benefit from learning more about savings? So this is a multiple choice. You have children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, younger siblings, younger cousins, children of friends or students of your own. Which of the following children in your life could benefit from learning more about saving? Okay, we're 80% voted in. Nineties. Oh, we may. Oh my gosh, we did it. Everyone voted. Good job, guys. You have a hundred percent participation. That's great. Let's share the results. So we have 68% of you guys saying my children, 16 saying my grandchildren, 36 of you guys have nieces or nephews, 24% uh, say younger siblings, 8% say younger cousins, 8% said children or friends, and 8% said students, right? So we have a big sphere of influence when it comes to the youth in our lives, right? Um, so if you have the ones that we just listed there or others you can think of, you should know that future generations need to know these savings and spending tools as well. Um, and just like I said earlier, it's never too early. It's never too late to set them up for success. So here's some ideas, some simple steps to take for each age level. This list is available on the resources page. So I'm just going to touch on a couple of them, but you guys can see the full list and see how you can apply these and help out those kids in your life. So at ages three to five, you can start teaching that money can be exchanged for things. Um, so if they watch you at the store, you play games with them. Ages five to nine, you can start giving that allowance, um, open a savings account and explain how it works. Ages nine to 13, you can encourage saving their allowance towards their goals. Um, I like this idea, get creative and offer savings match from you. So like a 401k, which I think is a great idea. Ages 13 to 15, um, you can expand the allowance. They can buy gifts for others and clothes for themselves. So taking that res personal responsibility. And then right before they head out the door, <laughs> so sad, 16 to 18 year olds, um, teach them how to manage their accounts online. Um, and it, please, this is the one thing I'm like of this whole list, find every 17 or 18 year old you can find and please explain to them about loans and credit cards and that they're going to get credit cards in the mail. And just because they get them in the mail doesn't mean they should use them and they shouldn't get loans for things that they should be saving for and, and just please, I'm just advocating, please. I've seen so many kids get taken advantage of right as 18. You know, they're already trying to get their footing on being an adult, having a job, going to school, whatever they're doing. And then you have the financial world that gets thrown in their lap too. So let's make sure that we're doing what we can to advocate for our kids in our lives and get them financially ready. Okay. There's my last soapbox. Okay, one more awesome resource coming up next month is our virtual Superstar Savings Saturday. So we're partnering with Junior Achievement of Idaho to put on a special event for kids in our community. Tiffany's going to go ahead and put the link in the chat so you can learn more if you want to sign up your kiddos. Um, that link will be in the chat box or you can find it on our website at pioneerfcu.org. I think that link's coming. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure I gave her that link, right? Yeah, yeah, there it is, cool. Okay, thank you, Tiffany. Okay, so I wanna wrap up and leave you guys with some encouragement. Um, first, I wanna say, you can do this. Okay, I'm looking at you. You can do this, okay? Even if you feel like you're only making small uh, changes, here's the thing, taking the first step is the hardest. Remember, all I'm asking you to do is to be mindful right away, right? So then you can keep moving forward and growing and learning. Okay, next, do not play the comparison game with what others have or what they're doing. Focus on your situation, find what works for you. Um, worrying about others can cause you to spend money, go into debt, stress, get frustrated, or just give up. And here's the thing, you got this. So forget about them. And lastly, be patient with yourself, please. Learning how to rein in your spending habits and saving money, it takes time. And everyone's income and knowledge is different, but be happy with any progress, okay? Whether you save $5 a month or $500 a month or $5,000 a month, whatever that amount is, you have to start somewhere. Um, and one last time, for the people in the back, progress, not perfection, friends, okay? All right. So you guys, it has been an absolute pleasure being with you guys here this evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to share a little bit of my knowledge and my heart for the subject. Um, I hope you leave here knowing just how capable you are to do the things you set your mind to and how proud I am that you showed up this evening.